Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Ronaldo, I'm from Brazil. Um, currently I'm working for a multinational company called Technicolor. Um, I'm working for the video uh, product, uh, production unit, but we also uh, contribute to, to, to the broadband unit in, the, in, our, in my company. So today, I'm gonna talk about OpenWRT. Uh, can Handy, can you please share the screen of uh, the slides, please? Okay, very good. So okay, so let's get started. Today, I'm, as I said, I'm gonna talk about OpenWRT. Uh, this is a very uh, a ten feet uh, overview of the, the the platform of the project. Uh, it's not my intention to to explain everything uh, that happens under the hood, but but well, my intention is to give you a, a very clear overview of the project and also instigate you to to get started with the uh, with OpenWRT in your home using your uh, using your boards or Raspberry Pi your uh, your own uh, Wi-Fi routers and so on. Okay, so today I'm gonna talk. Uh, as I said, I will give you an overview of OpenWRT. Then I will walk through the their core libraries and their services. Uh, I will show you um, uh, about the, the the build system of OpenWRT, so you'll be able to to build your own OpenWRT image after the after this presentation. Okay, and at the end, I will answer some questions that you can send on the on the chat. Okay, so okay, let's get started. What exactly is OpenWRT, right? Uh, OpenWRT is a, a little bit more than a regular um, regular Linux distribution. Okay, it's more like an ecosystem for embedded computers and especially for network devices. Okay, so it was designed to to run on very low end devices, very low end embedded computers as Wi-Fi routers or commercial as well commercial Wi-Fi routers, and you know it runs on a variety of boards as the Raspberry Pi and the Onion boards, and and you know a, a lot of boards that you can find on the web on the on, on your in, on the stores uh, across the web. Okay, uh, the project started in 2004 uh, when some developers decided to request to Linksys to release the, the, the source code for the WRT uh, 54G. Okay, uh, that that's a uh, a Wi-Fi router from Linksys. Okay, that contain the, the that has a source code that contains uh, uh, source codes uh, with uh, some GPL licenses and open and others open uh, open source licenses okay so they were uh, they, they, they needed to 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 release those uh, th those source codes due it to the fact that that the source codes contains uh, uh, open source licenses, okay. Uh, and in 2016, um, the project uh, has split it in two, okay. Uh, then uh, another project has born called Lidi. Okay, so you find on the web when, when searching for OpenWRT, we find the Lidi project as well. Uh, LIDI stands for Linux Embedded Development Environment, and do it to uh, to an agreement among the the community of OpenWRT. Some developers decided to leave the the, the project and it started a new project that's called LIDI. And but in 2018, they decided to came back to OpenWRT and remerged the codes of Liddy and OpenWRT again. 
So and it all they also decided to bring with them some policies from the community of Lidi to open WRT. Uh, those those policies are related to about a lot of things. Okay, uh, since the release cycles and uh, even the the the, the banners <laughs> from SSH were related to the, to those. Uh, to those uh, policies, but what you see now it's a merge of OpenWRT and Lit. Okay, so uh, okay, uh, what 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 OpenWRT has uh, as a key con concept that I would like to to, to talk today? Uh, the, those key concepts. Uh, are in my view um, uh, the most important uh, concepts in the in the system uh, as the unified configuration and the implementation of tiny message bus and a tiny process manager. Uh, I will talk uh, more about those concepts along the, the the presentation. Okay, I will present to you what services implement that that tiny message bus, that unified configuration tools, and the process manager. But keep in mind that those concepts are important. Okay, and will be uh, how can I say they will driven all the development of OpenWRT. Uh, okay, and. About this release cycles, uh, we have a, a, a yearly based release cycle. So you, you expect to have one, one release per year. So you had one in 2017, one in 2018, one in 2019. You are still expecting for this year release. Uh, it may be uh, released in some days, OK? Uh, Usually the releases uh, are out in uh, between uh, May and August of the current year. Okay. Uh, another interesting point about OpenWRT: it contains about three thousand packages on its uh, repositories, so you can uh, you ca you can integrate or you can install. Well, those packages uh, from you know SSH servers to web servers, um, a lot of uh, a, a really uh, a great variety of uh, of packages are available. Okay, um, as I said, a lot of boards are, are supported, uh, especially commercial routers. So some routers, the Wi-Fi routers, uh, are are compatible with open open wrt so you can install on them you can uh, take it out the uh, the stock firmware the, the the firmware provided by the company that builds the the, the device the manufacturer and you can install your own uh, your own firmware on it based on open wrt okay um, before trying to install open wrt on your devices you need to be aware that it needs at least four megabytes of flash and 32 megabytes of RAM. Uh, with less uh, flash than that, you won't be able to install new packages on the device. And with, the, in, with less than 32 megabytes of RAM, you won't be able to, to run several servers and several services on your device. So it, it will be a bit a uh, bit difficult to to maintain your um, your system reliable. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Um, uh, about now, I uh, will start to talk about the core libraries and the services that were specially designed and special developed for OpenWRT. Okay. Uh, and those services are driven by those key concepts that I talked earlier. Okay. Uh, the first service I would like to talk about it's called UBus. UBus is an IPC, also, uh, which, me, which means uh, interprocess communication. 
So it's a service uh, very similar to Dbus. You in regular uh, Linux distributions, you will find uh, Dbus as the uh, interprocess communication service. But in the OpenWRT, they decided to develop a lightweight IPC uh, because Dbus is very uh, resource consuming. And it also has a very difficult to understand uh, API. So Ubus has an API that which is e e very easy to understand, very easy to integrate to your own applications. Uh, and it also consumes uh, 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 less uh, resources than Dbus. Okay, it works on Unix sockets. So it, it uses Unix sockets to bring communication among, uh, among services, among processes. Uh, using TLV messages, we are very, uh, very lightweight messages and very easy to understand messages. Okay. Um, it has, as I said, it has a C API it, uh, provided to you uh, by a library called LibUbus. Uh, but if you prefer to program in Lua or in scripting languages, you can use those Lua bindings. Okay, uh, they are also provided along with uh, the C API. Uh, it also contains a command line application uh, that is the, that is intended to those that are developing applications that integrates UBUS to, to, to their code to monitor UBUS, um, UBUS messages and to, uh, to see what's happening under the hood when UBUS is working, okay? Uh, this is a, a, an example of UBUS call. Uh, here I'm um, showing uh, I'm showing some uh, some information about the system that is running OpenWRT at that moment. Okay, so um, I was running OpenWRT on my Raspberry Pi 3, and I was running the OpenWRT 19.07 snapshot. Uh, the snapshot uh, means that I was working on the code uh, uh, that it's an image that I I, I release it. It's not a, a, a official release of the OpenWRT. Okay, and uh, we can see the the the, ver the kernel version. Okay, um, uh, uh, another key point to 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 emphasize here is that the Ubus uh, the Ubus command line uh, application can. Um, Uses the the, the G, JSON uh, the the JSON uh, JSON file format, so it's easy to understand uh, and easy to see the the the, the information in the, in the screen. It's also easy to integrate to your shell scripts. Okay, so it's a good start point to if you bust the command line before going to 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 the API, to programming, to integrate UBUS uh, into, your, into your, your own software, okay? Uh, it, it, it's better to run and, and try to understand how it works before trying to integrate it to your, to your applications. Uh, another service that I would like to talk uh, is called UCI. Um, UCI stands for Unified Configuration Interface. And what UCI does is it configures the whole system for you in a centralized way. So you don't need to configure your firewall using IP tables. You don't need to configure your SSH uh, going to Dropbeer to under, uh, or understanding Dropbeer options. You just need to go to slash etc slash config, uh, find the files that are related to the service that you would like to configure, and change the configuration there and run UCI or run UCI to change those configurations. Okay. 
Uh, I will show you some examples in the next slide. Uh, under the hood, what UCI does is parsing configuration files that are, at lo uh, that are located in a single single location, as I said, in slash etc. slash config. And it, it works in the middle of the, those configuration files and the applications that you want to, to configure. So when you run UCI to configure your firewall, it will operate uh, on the EP tables for you. So uh, you don't need to, to understand how IP tables work. So uh, you just need to configure uh, you need to find the, 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 the configuration file or run a UCI to configure the, 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 the firewall for you. So it's much easier to configure uh, difficult things in, in OpenWRT using UCI, okay? Uh, it also has a commit and rollback support. Uh, what that means, that means that if you, uh, if you, are running a new configuration that you not uh, uh, not sure that we work, you can revert it back to the previous configuration. So if it, in case you try it, a configuration that's not working or something that's not not attend your your expectations, you can uh, roll back the whole configuration to the uh, previous state. Okay, so UCI brings it to you the in this future. And also, you can commit in case you tr uh, to you can persist the configurations uh, uh, running commit from UCI. For example, every single configuration that you it does using the command line, they are not uh, they are not persisted in the system. So uh when you reboot your device you, you lost that 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 configuration that you did so it's a good idea to do after checking if it, uh, the configuration you need to commit it's a good idea to commit your configuration so it will persist uh through reboots and you know uh okay and uci has a command line application and also has an uh, C API called libuci. Uh, I have used libuci some years ago, and it works very fine. It's a very easy API, so you can integrate, you can develop uh, your own rules uh, using this C API. Okay. Uh, this is an, an example of the the, the command line application. Um, in the right side you can see uh, the co uh, configuration file for the system, okay? Uh, as you can see, it is located on etc com uh, slash config. Uh, as e every configuration in the system is located here, okay? The firewall, you know, the uh, network related configurations, SSH and so on, are all located here. Uh, it's a, a single stop for all. Okay, it's a one one stop for all. So uh, here I'm I'm just getting the 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 file, and on the left side you can see the the command UCI export. I'm exporting the system configuration, and you see the the same output. Okay, uh, side of the package system, everything is is uh, is the same. Okay. So these are two types of configurations that you can do. You can configure your system through the UCI command line uh, tool, or you can edit the etc config files, okay? Next. Um, this is an example of a uh, rollback uh, feature. Uh, I'm setting the host name here. Uh, firstly, I'm getting the the actual uh, actually the the, uh, the the host name of this device. It's OpenWRT. Uh, next, I'm setting the, the the a new host name, uh, calling Egypt. Then I'm checking the changes that I did to the system. 
configuration file. Uh, so it's uh, the, the UCI system is, say, is saying system.config.hostname change it to Egypt. Then I apply this this command applies the 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 configuration to the system. Okay, so the, the, the configuration is applying through the init scripts. Uh, you may notice that I'm just reloading. The, the reload doesn't mean re, uh, restart. So uh, another feature that UCI brings to us is the uh, there is no need to reboot your system to apply new configurations as you do with regular uh, firmwares for uh, Wi-Fi routers, for example. Uh, so a simple reload may do the trick. So it, there is no need to, to reboot or restart a service. Just a reload, you, you apply the, 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 the new configurations uh, without the need to 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 lost your work or to stop the, the uh, your system for some minutes or seconds okay uh, here i'm checking the host name the new host name is egypt okay and um on the next command i'm reverting to the previous set uh, host name and as you can see it uh, it's OpenWRT again, okay? So this is the functionality of reverting or well, bring, uh, to bring back the old configurations, okay? Uh, another interesting package developed exclusively to, to OpenWRT is called Lucy. Lucy is a reference web interface uh, intended for uh, configuration and bring information to the users. Uh, maybe if you have tried it, open up RT once in your life, you see, uh, you, you may have seen uh, Lucy uh, when you type, uh, uh, you know, one uh, one nine two dot one. Uh, one six eight and one, dot one dot one address on the on your URL, so on your browser. So uh, the, the the interface that appears to you probably is Lucy. Okay, uh, it it comes in the Lucy comes uh, along with the system since the release in uh, two thousand no. Uh, yes, 2017. So OpenWRT 17 uh, has Lucy as default uh, web interface for configuration. Uh, formally, it was implemented in Lua, but now it, they, it is implemented in HTML and in JavaScript to avoid to overload the devices. Um, since HTML and JavaScript are uh, are, are code that runs on your browser instead of your device or your router. Okay, so uh, it works under web servers called U uh, Micro HTTPD, which is a very tiny um, uh, HTTP server, or Nginx. Uh, Nginx is very well known uh, by the community of Linux, so you may. Uh, you may know what Nginx. So you can use micro HTTPD or Nginx for, to host Lucy for you. Okay, it also has support to HTTPS, so to security, uh, through embed TLS or OpenSSL. Uh, those are options that you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, you can choose during the, the build of the Lucy. Okay, uh, those are uh, examples of Lucy screens. Okay, um, the first one on your left side shows you uh, some configurations about the system, and on the right side you see the the traffic load uh, on the interface BRLAN. Okay, it's a very simple interface. So as I said, it's just a reference. So uh, probably, if you want to 
to integrate OpenWRT to your own devices, to pro, uh, commercially commercial devices, uh, you like to 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 implement your own web interface and want to use Lucy, but you can use, of course, Lucy as a reference. Okay, so but before that, be aware of the licenses. Okay, um, this is another service uh, of implemented in OpenWRT or by the OpenWRT team. Uh, it's called a Net NetIFD. Uh, NetIFD handles network configuration changes. Uh, it centralizes all the configuration uh, regarding networks in, in the system. So it's also responsible to bring uh, configuration changes without rebooting the whole system. Okay. Uh, it listens to UBuzz events and also listens it listens to to, to kernel uh, to kernel events. So, for example, when you unplug a cable, a network cable, uh, you 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 trigger uh, an event on the kernel, and NetFID will be aware of that. Okay, uh, so you can implement an action uh, okay you can uh, for example implement an action uh, when the, you insert a cable or when you remove a cable from your device so and also when you reload a configuration file uh, you can netfid can be aware of that okay uh, it uses a mix of ubus and shell apis uh, it's a bit hard to understand exactly how it works, but I suggest you to to check the Stephen Barth's presentation on YouTube. I'm bringing you the the uh, the web address to to access that presentation. It explains in depth uh, how NetFID works. Okay, uh, it's more intended to those uh, who wants to understand how networks works under the hood uh, on Ample and WRT. Uh, devices if you are a regular user you you never be you you may need to know, to understand that okay um procd procd is a service to control the processes in open wrt uh, as the other services that i have presented uh, it's a lightweight uh, manager so uh, it consumes uh, uh, few resources from your boards so uh, it, it substitutes for example the system d or csv scripts uh, it's uh, uh, for, it's very similar to csv script in its scripts so you have start stop restart uh, it controls the scripts that are located in slash etc slash init dot d Okay, and the most uh, famous uh, feature that it has is the process watchdog. So if your process, for, for some reason your service breaks, uh, it can restart the, the, for you the, 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 the failing process. And you do try for uh, a determined time and, and uh, it can't uh, tr uh, you need you, you, it will log for you uh, what happened okay so this is a very good feature uh, very interesting for those who are considering to use uh, open on their on their products so uh, it also applies uh, some resources limitations to services uh, it they, they since that the, it, it implements everything on uh, on bash scripts, it, it's very easy to 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 use the watchdog or to apply research limitations. Uh, you have an entry on their uh, on, on their wiki on OpenWRT wiki that explains well how how to proceed to 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 implement uh, uh, proc the scripts. Okay. 
So uh, I advise you to visit the openwrt.org for more information about Procd. Okay. Um, LibuBox. Uh, LibuBox is a utility core library. Um, instead of using glib, the OpenWrt developers decided to implement LibuBox, uh, which again is a a few resources consuming consumer uh, of uh, so uh, it's 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 intended to 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 consume less resources than glib so it implements loops uh, lists uh, socks so uh, it, 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 it's an, if you, con, you are considering to implement your own software to integrate to OpenWrt, uh, you need to check it out, LibuBox, uh, because uh, you can have uh, uh, you can have a lot of uh, resources available using less resources from uh, your hardware. Okay. Okay, um, on the next steps, I will talk about the build system of OpenWrt. Okay, uh, the build system is based on the well-known build root. Okay, build root project. Uh, it includes uh, all, all you need to, to build uh, or to cross build your images. Okay, it contains cross two chains, some host tools. So, it has few few dependencies, okay? Uh, if you are considering to build your own OpenWrt image, I uh, may suggest you to use Ubuntu, okay, uh, as your host system on your computer uh, or in your in integration server, um, because it, it, uh, it has a lot of documentation uh, about building OpenWrt on, on Ubuntu. You will find a lot of uh, documentation about that. Okay, so uh, the build system is based on a hierarchy of make files. So if you, if you are familiar with make files, you won't find uh, you won't find difficult to 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 integrate new packages or to understand the, the whole system, the whole build system. Okay, uh, those are the build steps. Uh, it's very easy, so git clone. I'm cloning here the branch openwrt19.07, okay. I'm using the GitHub, uh, the GitHub mirror uh, for speed, uh, you know, for speed reasons, but you can use the, the openwrt mirror, no problem. After downloading, after cloning the, the, the repository, you need to run scripts, feeds update, and scripts, feeds install to make available the, 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 the those 3,000 3, packages uh, from the, 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 the repositories, okay? Um, if you are familiar with build root, you, you know you need to run make menu config to configure the, the system that you are going to, to, to build, okay? Uh, this is a tip. Um, the next, the, the next command is a tip. Uh, just run make download to download all the files uh, before uh, before building them. Actually, so uh, the, the the more time consuming here is downloading the files. Uh, so. I, I really, really advise you to, to, to run make download before running make, okay? Before, uh, make, uh, the, the probably, uh, the probability of running make, uh, running download before and you got success is very, is, is very high, okay? So, okay, that's it. Uh, it's, as you see, it's very straightforward. It's very similar to build root. Uh, uh, who is familiar with build root, you, you won't find difficult to to build OpenWrt, okay? Uh, I would like to show you my, I'm running OpenWrt on my, my Raspberry Pi. 
uh, I run these steps before the, the presentation. So I build my own image. I will show you the OpenWT running on my Raspberry Pi. Just a second. OK, I think everybody's seeing my 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 terminal. OK, this is uh, I connected to to the, my Raspberry Pi through SSH, SSH. So I'm running Linux OpenWRT, OK, version 4.14. Uh, I would like to show you the configurations on etc. config that I talked about. As you can see, each of these files are configurations, OK? So let me edit some of them. For example, the system. You can change the host name. You can change the time zone. You can change uh, NTP servers, OK? Uh, I don't recommend you to edit directly the, the, the config files. Instead of that, use UCI, OK? Um, okay uh, system. Uh, you prefer prefer using UCI command line tools to 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 configure your system, or use Lucy if you prefer. Lucy is a a, a very good um, web interface, so it's easy to to use. Okay, uh, I would like uh, I also would like to show you the init scripts from ProcD. They are located on etc. initd. So they are very similar to CSV, but they inherit uh, RC common uh, RC common script. Uh, so it's a bit easier to 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 build uh, a, a a readable <laughs> init script. Okay, so. Okay, it has a validation. As you can see, it has a validation section. All right. So far, so good. Uh, I think we can uh, start a question and answer session. Okay. Any questions? Uh, do we have questions? Okay. Uh, we have a question, how to develop and contribute to OpenWRT? What are the prerequisite skills for that? Um, first of all, uh, I, will, I would like to, to say that you need to, uh, to be an embedded developer, for example, or understand uh, well how networks works, uh, how network works. And you be uh, you can be a Lua developer or a C developer. I think there are a lot of work on C, uh, mainly in C. For for uh, I'm not member of the community and I need to make that clear. I'm just a user, an advanced user, and also an integrator of OpenWRT. Uh, uh, I integrate OpenWRT into products and uh, uh, you know in boards uh, at my home. So uh, I'm not a contributor of OpenWRT, actually. But I know that you can contribute uh, with your knowledge in C and Lua and any programming skills that you have. Uh, also, the, uh, I saw a, um, a forum entry this week. They were requesting people to contribute to the wiki, so to the documentation. So if you if you are able to write in English, you can contribute to the documentation of OpenWRT if you are an advanced user, for example. Hey, we have another question, Hamdi. Hi, I'm into the networking field. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I have not understood your question. Uh, could you please make it a bit clearer for me? 
Wi-Fi 6. Um, I'm not aware of the Wi-Fi 6 support on the regular, on the community-based OpenWRT, but I know that there are some commercial products uh, that uses OpenWRT with uh, Wi-Fi 6. So uh, that, that's another thing that I would like to clarify. Uh, some technologies are not supported by the community of OpenWRT. For example, DSL, uh, Doxies and Jipong. So those are uh, those are technologies supported by companies using the OpenWRT. So they develop proprietary uh, drivers to 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 use the those technologies. I think it's, uh, the same happens with Wi-Fi six. It will depends on the on the stock. Uh, on this SOC that uh, that are in, in your router, so uh, you. But but I'm not aware if the the community is uh, is already supporting Wi-Fi six on OpenWR team. It uh, as I said, it will depends on the manufacturer of the SOC to um, provide drivers for open source drivers to 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 do the community. Uh, there is another point that I would like to clarify, since we have time. Um, yesterday we received a question on forehand, <laughs> okay, uh, about the implementation of OpenWRT on large networks and uh, you know in provisioning for large networks. Uh, usually, this is a uh, a role not for the OpenWRT developers or OpenWRT uh, integrators, but a role for the, the the carrier, for the internet service providers. Uh, they usually use uh, CWMP, which stands for, for CPA, uh, One Management Protocol, um, which is well known as TR69. Uh, uh, so there is uh, open source solutions for that. So if you are a, a small ISP, you can use OpenWRT with easy CWMP, uh, which is an open source solution for uh, already integrated to OpenWRT. So you can use to, to, to deploy to provisioning uh, uh, in uh, OpenWRT on large scale or mid-size scale, okay? Uh, that, that is another project called Carrier WRT, uh, which is more intended for products or commercial products. Uh, it has already uh, integrated CW, CWMP on, the, on their code base, okay? So in case you are considering to use OpenWRT on your ISP, uh, you may to be aware that you, you it won't be able to 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 use the stock uh, OpenWRT images to to deploy um, to deploy configuration on field. It would be better to integrate uh, CWMP and TR69 strategies to to bring uh, to bring configuration to several devices at the same time. Yes, Andy, you can download OpenWRT on your router uh, if your router is supported. There is a list of supported devices on the openwrt.org, so you can check there uh, and, and see if your router is already supported. So you can, it's very straightforward, it's similar to updating your um, first, uh, most of them, <laughs> it's easy to do that. So. It's similar to to uh, upgrade your your firmware, your stock firmware. Okay, uh, you won't need to to understand uh, uh, how to to develop or build the the OpenWRT. So, in case you would like to build the OpenWRT, you you need a bit more skills. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, we have a clarification from Ahmed. Uh, let me think. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
I think it yes, but I'm not sure. Sorry. Uh, you may need to go to the. You may need to check, uh, for example, how the the, the scripts regarding uh, wireless uh, wireless networks uh, uh, are implemented. So, uh, so you be uh, you be you need to check that those those uh, those scripts. But I'm not uh, I'm not sure because some of those encryptions are implemented in the SOC. So are hardware implementations, not software. So you need to be aware of that. So maybe uh, it's not possible to do that. But well, of course, if you have a very powerful device, uh, you, can, uh, you can encrypt and decrypt uh, in a... <laughs> in a usable way so because th th those kind of encryptions are very uh, very um, CPU time consuming so SLC manufacturers decide to implement that in the um, in the SLC